I think that's a, a wonderful start to um, what I what I know will be an absolutely fascinating conversation. And um, although I don't think you need any introduction after after seeing that, I would love for each of you to just briefly say hello, um, tell us um, a little bit about what your role was in the film, and maybe also a little bit about kind of what you do um, in other times in your life. So maybe shall we start with um, uh, Rob? Hey there. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks so much, Erin. Um, so um, uh, my name is Rob, right? Um, graphic designer, motion graphics designer. Um, so I've been working um, with Rick and I, I've been like collaborating together for, I don't know, like 15 years now. Um, and uh, we began sort of collaborating on kind of like a lot of still image um, sort of in camera stuff. Um, and over time it's evolved into sort of like a moving image um, body of work. Um, so for me right now, this, this piece that we've just worked on, these sort of this series of films, kind of the apex of that collaboration. Um, so yeah, really, really exciting time um, for, for this kind of work and, uh, and, and, and where it's going. Uh, and Rick's, uh, Rick's been working with the most amazing dancers and finding these incredibly talented and gifted people. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's, you know, as a motion graphics designer, it's really exciting doing, doing these kinds of projects, very unique. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my sort of story, I guess. Thank you for that. That's, um, that's a good, a good place to start. Um, Rick, would you like to um, follow up from that? Sure. Uh, so my name is Rick Guest and I'm a uh, photographer primarily uh, and then a director. Um, as Rob says, we worked together for years and years um, and it's been a complete evolution al along the way. Um, Rob has an amazing sensibility of how images roll from one to the next um, and how they can, how he can use his sort of, uh, his talents to reinforce not just what I think about a piece, but actually um, I think at most times what the dancer is trying to say as well and echo that sentiment and, and, and expand visually on that emotional content. Um, so yeah, my background is in, is photographing dancers um, as well as, you know, a lot of sports stuff. I do a lot of Nike and Adidas and, uh, and all sorts of commercial stuff. Um, but dance has been just this sort of bizarre, overwhelming passion for the last sort of 12, 15 years now. Um, and I first met Jamal on a job, on a commercial job, um, bizarrely for Ikea. Uh, and we spent no time together. It was like a factory. We had probably, I don't know, 20 dancers to get through in a day. And, um, uh, you know, he was amazing because, uh, you know, he dances so incredibly beautifully. Um, but I just didn't have time on the day to really dig any deep or really talk to him, really sort of, you know, get to know him, get to see where he's coming from. Um, and so when the idea for this series kind of came up, you know, between Erin and, and, and ourselves, um, there were lots of different aspects that we wanted to talk about, um, which we'll come to, um, of mental health and mental health awareness and how to promote that. Um, and it seemed like a sensible place to promote, not just, you know, any mental health issues that we're all going through, particularly right now, but in general as creatives um, that we suffer from, to, to, to highlight the positive aspects of that as well. And so flow state for me is very much um, as a springboard from what Jamal does, but I've watched dancers lose themselves and, uh, in the music and in their, in their physicality, um, uh, you know, over a lot of years. Um, but it's particularly notable with Jamal because he embodies it. Uh, and because for, for him, it looks from, from the outside, it looks like jazz. He flows with the music. I've never seen such musicality and such, um, such rhythm. Um, it, it's quite astonishing in the flesh. Um, and I think that echoes the audience's experience, you know, my experience of watching him, um, that it can also be transcendent. You can get lost in the moment. And I think that's sort of something that we'll obviously talk about in a bit. Um, but that's my take on the piece and, and working with Jamal and obviously with Rob. I think it's something we share. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, and now coming to you, Jamal, a little introduction. Yeah, so um, my name is Jamal Sterrett-Phoenix. I'm a 
I'm a dancer. Um, I like to think of it. I like to think of myself as a as a visual artist, um, mainly because, like, for me, when I dance, it's like it's kind of like dissolving like all labels and just being as free as possible. So if I kind of think of my dancing as art, it kind of like frees up my mind. Um, I'm from a I'm from a semi, not too small, but like a semi, semi small town called Nottingham. Um, it's like three hours away from London. Um, and I dance, um, I, I take part in a little bit of, I do like a little bit of photography once in a while, a little bit of filming. Um, but for the most part, I just love to dance and just, and just be free, free within dancing. Thank you so much, Jamal. Um, it's really wonderful to to have you all in this space and to be able to discuss the film and just very briefly to sort of uh, talk about our perspective from One Dance UK on this. Um, as the sector support organization for dance, we are um, we're around to support everyone in the sector and everyone who dances. And um, my role within that is to kind of support physical and mental health. And um, as Rick has mentioned, um, and as I think we're all aware, this last year has been um, full of challenges for physical and for mental health. And also I think full of a lot of um, opportunities to recognize our strengths and the things that, um, that we have power and passion about. Um, but I think these films um, uh, and the opportunity to collaborate with Rick on um, uh, a previous film that we released in um, October, as well as kind of um, some future upcoming films. Uh, so watch this space. It's been a really wonderful opportunity to explore this a little bit further and to start the dialogue from a place of movement and, and art. Because one of the, the very first things Rick and I had a conversation about was how hard it is to put into words things around emotional health. And so this is a really brilliant collaboration for us at One Dance UK as well. Um, and I guess maybe that kind of leads me very nicely into my first question for all of you. Um, which is, why did you want to make this film? What was it about making this film that felt important to you? Um, um, well, maybe I should start that because <laughs> uh, the beginning is my fault. Um, you know, as I said, you know, Jamal and I worked together very briefly um, and it was more really, um, he kind of got me out a lot of trouble because there wasn't really time to kind of get into what we were doing um, on an individual dancer basis because there were so many dancers and we were so up against it, um, you know, uh, time wise that he literally just heard the music and did his thing and it was absolutely beautiful right out of the gate. It was completely uncontrived. There was no choreography. He just had to sort of wing it. Um, and, uh, and it was just fantastic. And so he's always been in the back of my mind, you know, for a long time of, oh, I'd really love to explore, you know, what he can do a little bit further. Um, and, uh, and, and so when the opportunity kind of came up with, you know, with, with the collaboration with One Dance, um, it seemed to make sense that, um, you know, mental health is a very odd issue, you know, uh, even sort of saying the words, even me saying it now, it feels clunky and it feels, uh, um, it's always pejorative. It almost always feels negative. Um, and uh, I think being a creative um, and, you know, working with a lot of other creatives, we are all on this sort of odd little spectrum, you know, uh, of behavior. And when people talk about mental health, it generally has, you know, or it's there's a bit of a problem where in essence, for most creatives, it's our superpower. This is what we draw on to, um, uh, you know, to allow us to do what we do because we see the world in a from a slightly different perspective. You know, it allows us to, to do the, this stuff. Um, and so I, I, it's very nice that if we can broaden that term out, that when someone says mental health, it's, oh no, not, I'm not depressed. I'm having the best day, you know, we're doing whatever we're doing, or this, this feeling allows us, this mental perspective almost, allows us to do this kind of crazy stuff. So that was something I always wanted to explore. Um, and, you know, when Jamal dances, you know, as, as he says, and obviously he can, he can put this into words perhaps better than I can, there is a transcendence. There is a losing of oneself, as, as it, you know, as he just said, there is a dissolving 
um, of the artist into the artwork. Um, and I think, you know, it's the same for all of us. When Rob and I started working on this, obviously when we were shooting it, you know, you see it unfold in front of you and it's, it's quite exquisite. At that point, very often I'm more of a viewer than a, you know, more of a, uh, than a participant. Um, and obviously we'll change things. We'll look at, you know, different angles and we'll, I'll do my little, whatever that odd thing is, you know, as, as someone with an eye, you know, that's what we do. And, and, and I can't really explain it. Um, to then further enhance, you know, what Jamal's doing. Um, and I think it's that very, you know, we have a, as creatives often, one of the aspects of mental health that, that, that we have is that we have a tremendous sense of empathy. So when we're with clients, we can understand them very quickly as what they're trying to say, even if they can't sort of put it into words. Um, and it's the same with dancers that I've witnessed. Not only do they have a tremendous empathy for their audience, and so they respond to that, they also are in tune with their music in a very heightened way. Um, and I think that allows this sort of, and I think Jamal summed it up best, this dissolving into the artwork as opposed to being the artist. And, and you know, our creatives constantly are saying, you know what it just came it's speaking through me almost you almost see yourselves as a as a conduit to something else that I, you know i have no idea where it comes from um so that's in the shooting of it and in in the post-production of it is which is where rob and i you know we do our thing you know rob and i are of a very similar outlook on what we do um we absorb everything, we see everything that we that, you know we, everything we see that we've ever seen gets filed away um, and when you see something new, it gets compared to everything you've ever seen very, very quickly. Um, I, you know, I guess they call it intuition, but uh, it's not a conscious process. And so Rob and I, you know, we're very, very similar in that regard, so that we have a shorthand. You know, if I say, yeah, it needs to be something a bit more, and I'll use very esoteric terms sometimes, or I'll reference a film in a very obscure way, not just an obscure film, Rob will understand that. And he can read me, even, at, you know, Rob's in Canada, I'm in London, Jamal's in Nottingham, you know, um, there's this sort of shorthand um, of, of sort of almost a secret language, which, again, I don't really care to unpick it. I don't really know what it's called. And I guess it's just intuition. But our jobs, you know, that we end up doing, we, we've got to that place because we have this, this empathy between us. Um, and like I say, that's a mental health state as well that's not you know just how am i feeling today that's a way of feeling as well that enables yeah. us to, to have this shorthand you know when yeah. i spoke to jamal the best thing for me is me to say to jamal is this is the music listen to him and because he will take what i've taken from it he will see the rhythm of it as i have seen it um and yet he will be an even more heightened than i am um and can interpret it to interpret that you know figuratively and through his and i think um I was just noticing, sorry, um, uh, Jamal, you were nodding along kind of to the the conversation about the need for sort of um, a broader approach to mental health. Um, and I really, I kind of, I can see and hear um, a lot of kind of agreement in terms of collaboration between you and, and Rick on that. So I wonder if you might sort of say a little bit about that and why that's important for you. Yeah, definitely. I feel... Um... We can, like for example, the way the way that I kind of live my life is kind of trying to, trying to be within that state as much as possible. Um, being in that, well, people call it like the flow state or living within your intuition. I think it's a very important thing for creatives to do because um, when you're in that place, ideas, a lot of ideas come. You know, it, change, it kind of tells you what to do, and that's how I learned to dance was by following kind of my intuition like sometimes I'll do projects um not anymore but sometimes I might do projects where my intuition say no this one ain't for you and it's not necessarily because like the person it's not because of the person it's just my for some reason my personal intuition is saying nah this project ain't for you like wait until you find another one and then obviously when when Rick contact contacted me to do the, the flow state project my intuition was saying yeah you know, because um, obviously he he has a very, I feel that he has a very um, large respect for dance and a large passion for dance. And you can feel it coming off him. And, and when you feel something coming off somebody, that's when that's when you go towards it. And your intuition is like, yeah, that's that's the person 
you need to do some work with or you know to get to get what the intuition wants to say out you know what i mean it's, it's and it's got nothing to, it's not even like a personal thing it's got nothing to do with you like you're like a vehicle yeah yeah you're like a you're just a your body is just a vehicle to express what needs to be said in that moment and then you don't own it anymore it's just out there for people to be inspired by it. and it kind of has this like rippling effect kind of like the effects in the video it's like it ripples outwards and everyone else gets touched by it and then they create something from seeing that and then it repeats and it's just a constant cycle and everyone everyone just gets inspired by it but yeah. definitely having having that kind of like it's true when you say the word mental health you feel like it's a negative thing like even saying it now but I think we all have to kind of especially moving towards the future kind of change our ways of thinking about it because like a lot of jobs are becoming automated and soon I feel it will be a lot more to do with the mind and, and creative problem solving especially to do with like the environment like packaging and upcycling clothing and there's going to have to be a lot of new innovations and we're going to need creativity for that you know what I mean so yeah yeah, absolutely. And I love I love the kind of connection that you made between the way that the the visuals look and how you ripple and how your effect ripples to other people. Um so I guess one of the other things that I was really curious about was the the kind of the experience that you all had in terms of your collaborative process. So um, Rick has kind of touched a little bit on this, this exchange that he has with Rob and he's had with you, Jamal, about kind of making the film and considering ideas. But Rob, I'd love for you to kind of come in on what it's been like working, um, working across continents, really, with Rick for, for quite a long time and maybe specifically on this film. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, working remotely. Um, and I've always seen it as a way to the future in a way. Um, you know, I used to sort of have a desk job working in like post-production and design, which I enjoyed. But the whole thing with the remote thing has been great because I've always been able to work by myself well and focus. Um, so I'm not a, like an open plan sort of guy. Like I'm in an office by myself just focusing. Um, and yeah, so it doesn't really matter where I am in a way. Um, so I think um, like a couple of years ago, probably, probably about 10 years back, um, you know, when, when something interesting is happening, you can feel it very much like Jamal's saying, it's, it's intuitive and, and, and you kind of have to like give it up. Um, and for a very long time, I've done that. I've, I've gotten used to the idea of sort of throwing your hands up in the air and going whatever creatively is out there in the ether. Um, Hopefully, it's you're going to end up being some sort of conduit to it or be a part of it. It's almost it's slightly spiritual in a way, um, and you open yourself up to these things, and it's actually really interesting. I mean, I'll get on a I'll get on a plane and I'll fly like from South Africa, like <laughs> I'll stop in Dubai on the way to London before a job has even been signed off, like an interesting project with Rick. Um, I remember years ago we were working on something, and it was like I didn't even know if the project was going to happen, <laughs> but I intuitively got on a flight. <laughs> Um, and uh, I was halfway like two in the morning in Dubai and I was like so obviously the job's happening Rick and he's like yep yeah like I, I was there the next day like and I, and this this project with Jamal feels like that it's it's uh, I, I remember Rick saying he, he, he sort of pinged me um, in this uh, was, when was it just a while back now um, it's like I'm, I'm doing these really interesting dance films um, do you want to do you want to work with me on them? And I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. Let's let's give it a go. Like, let's you know, let's do let's feel it out again, just like Jamal saying, just feeling it out, being intuitive about it. Um, and then the, the shoot day came, and, and Rick filmed something on his phone of Jamal um, just doing a take, and it absolutely blew my mind. Like, I literally, almost fell out of my chair. I was like, this is insane. Like, this is meant to be happening right now. Like hurry up, finish filming the stuff and get it me because I, I, I want to start looking at what this is. Um, and yeah, it, it, that was it. I, I, I was in. And um, it's, it's for me, like watching Jamal dance, uh, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like a vicarious like thing. Like it's, it's um, I don't know. I mean, I can't do what Jamal does. 
you know, the way he expresses emotion through movements. Um, and that's very empowering. Like when, you, when you're looking at that, when you're watching it, um, and this such an incredible, um, uh, he has such an incredible sort of um, uh, sense of rhythm and, 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 and a sense of what he's hearing that I can see that when I look at those, you know, uh, when I look at footage of him um, and, you know, and Rick's there capturing it. Like he's, he's there going, he, he's, he's almost like, it's just, it's just coming through Rick as well. It's, 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 it's effortless. And that's what's so fantastic about working with Rick. He just, you know, he's making this happen. He's making this whole process happen, which is phenomenal. So I'm always very really humbled when I work on these things. You know, it's not really about me per se or any of us, but yeah, Rick's, Rick's the guy that sort of start, kicks it off. And, <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, oh my word, here we go. So, so yeah, that's, so, the, so it all comes out of that. It all comes out of this very sort of, it's quite an ethereal process and you can feel it when it starts to happen. And I felt that like the minute I started working on the edits um, and, and going through the footage, I was like, this is going to be insane. Um, yeah. And every time I watch it, I get excited. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel so much the same. I, I, when I watch it, it just, it makes my heart rate rise. It's really, it's that powerful. It's and it's really fascinating that, um, Jamal, you talked about kind of being a conduit or kind of letting things come through you. Rob, you talked about intuition and those things are hard, hard to define. They're hard to kind of wrap your head around. And um, Rick, we've had uh, you and I, it sounds like you have these conversations with everybody that you meet, but just very transcendent conversations about how we communicate with each other. And I suppose I'd like to kind of talk about this idea of being in flow and what that means. So um, kind of, Rick, maybe, could you maybe give us a sense of how you think this film captures what people might be feeling right now and, and kind of where that sits in terms of this idea of being a conduit or having intuition, um, transcending things? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't put myself in, in the position of the viewer. I mean, people take from it what they take from it. Um, you know, and my goal in many ways is just that it can start a conversation like this, you know, that someone likes it or, you know, even if they don't like it, they, it starts some sort of a conversation about what it is. Even if it doesn't fulfill the goals that we've set out, at least people are talking about these issues. Um, and I think for me, you know, the transcendence part of it is, it's the absolute joy of what we do. It's when it's, and to touch on both what Jamal said and